Right, right, I lied, I lied. I'm gonna make this video and then one more. I think it'll be good. How many terms do we have total for this uh, celestial sphere? That's one term. Okay, plus one, 11, right? 11 terms that you should know. So when you try to memorize, it's good to lay out the patterns. What have we done uh, real quick? Right, so we've gone over uh, this map. Mm, there it is. Celestial sphere, that's one term. North celestial pole. What's at the north celestial pole in that direction? Polars. South celestial pole, no naked eye, celestial equator, declination right ascension. Tell us a particular address, although everything is moving, but that whatever it moves, it's still got its address, right? So you can still send it some mail. And that means that the direction through, it's better to think the direction through the celestial sphere window is given by DEC and RA, sometimes written again, if you see that symbol, that's the address. And you know, if you worked with it enough, you could look on a map maybe, but then seeing it in your sky, then you gotta really get to know the sky. It takes a while, but you can. You get to know the sky that our ancestors knew. I think that's pretty cool. So that's six. Let's do three more this time and then the last two, which will bring together some terms that we've, we've heard. Okay, kind of quick. And then I'm gonna show you a slideshow. So I think it's kind of cool. Let's, just, well, let's talk about this one. Connect it with Earth. Can you see that? I hope you can see that pretty well. Okay, you have this written, typed out in more detail in the book, but um, Earth. If you tell someone your latitude and longitude, they might go, what? I gotta look that up. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, right? But if you tell them the country you live in, or the region, in our case, the state, or Southern California, or Northern California, or San Francisco Bay Area, or New York Metro or Columbus, Ohio, or where, you know, then maybe people get a sense. And then if you start getting to smaller towns, Sao Pablo, Richmond, whatever, you know, they, they might know, not know, they might know Berkeley, they might not know Berkeley. So you, anyway, regions are a nice way to cut up and notice. And notice that the regions are made up, right? You. There are puzzles, right, where they have puzzle pieces and you put them and you learn the states and do stuff like that. And so each puzzle piece is symbolizes the region of a state, of one state, say, for example, where you can do the whole, the whole world and each puzzle piece could be a country, that would be cool. And it would cover the whole globe, right? And for the US, it would cover all the US. There'd be nothing outside the, of those puzzle pieces. So everything's gotta be inside the boundaries of those puzzle pieces, right? That's the idea. So you can use latitude and longitude. That gives you a very specific place, how much north or south, how much east or west, but you can also use regions. And that's what we do with our friend, the celestial sphere map, things being way out here, right? But this is our map and we're trying to tie it together and we're confused, but we're trying, but we're not getting it here. And uh, and so what people did is they would make patterns. It really kind of started by just making patterns. So it started with making patterns. And, and again, different people made different patterns of the same stars. They might connect these stars and I might connect those stars and we might share some stars, but we see different things. That's fine. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, no meaning to the patterns except my own stories and my own, my own thinking. But it's still useful, right? So you can make up you can make up the boundaries to states, you can change it, right? They have changed. So so our celestial sphere has regions, like the puzzle pieces or the boundaries of a state, with corn, Latin or Spanish, whatever Italian, with Stella, Latin for stars so the boundaries of a state right the boundaries
counties of Louisiana or big state, Montana. There's countries, uh, countries. there's cities inside the state. Yeah, that's it. There's cities, right? Towns inside the state. Inside these boundaries, there are stars and galaxies too, when you get to get to know that. So anything, you from Earth, we're surrounded by this window, if you think of it my way. And so you've got to look through the window. And every part of the window is broken up into pieces. Every part. How many total regions? Well, that's up for you to you decide. So you can break it up like this. Check this out. If I go to our planetarium dome, it's a dome, right? Let's see if I can do this. Pinch it. Can I pinch it? Oh, I guess go like this. And it can be broken up into little wedges, right? There's a dome, wedges. You can break it up however you want. But the stories have been around a long time. And we appreciate our ancestors. And so maybe we want to do regions around those patterns. But then which tribe? Which group? And yes, the Greeks got a lot of attention. They did a lot of neat things by really measuring things and using mathematics, but other people did too. So um, nonetheless, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, in 1930, decided to get together and said, Let, let's all talk about this in the same way. And so there are a total of, it's like, it's like saying how many states are there in the United States. In this case, how many, and remember, there's nowhere that you can look that isn't through one of these regions. There's 88. You don't discover the regions, there's no edge. These are by choice. You just, they chose to invent them, that choose to make the lines. 88 and Perhaps, that's one of my colleagues suggested long ago, James, uh, who I devoted the book to, uh, 88 keys on a piano. That'd be a good reason. That's a good enough reason for me. Um, so these are like the borders of a puzzle piece. Everything is inside there. Every star you see goes through that celestial sphere and a region. So it's a little easier than giving declination right ascension. You can say, oh, it's in Leo. So that means it. It may not be in the pattern of Leo, but it's in that area that we call Leo. Um, and so it's a region that you look through in every direction, right? There's anywhere you look in the sky, it's a constellation. You're looking through some region. You can't see the boundaries. The boundaries, by the way, go along lines of constant declination and right ascension, but they might be jagged like this. And some are big and some are small. There, I just made it up. And we're going to call this the John region. I discovered it. I discovered it. No, you just you chose it, right? You could you could come along and say, I don't like that region. I want to I want to go I want to make it bigger. Take that out and put it over here. Someone else maybe wants to make it smaller. Go around those stars of lines of constant declination and ascension. Anyway, there's just there's there's ADA regions that we talk about. You could memorize the names. I haven't. Uh, I know a bunch of them. You get used to it a little bit, but um, so yeah, the whole thing is broken up into ADA regions and. The initial kind of inspiration is the connect the dot patterns and stories. And so, you know, uh, uh, honoring and, and hearkening back to those patterns, uh, we put the regions around these patterns. So inside the regions, there are patterns. How many patterns are there? There's one inside of each region, so. Now, 
here's the thing about these patterns. If I draw a bunch of dots and ask you, what do you see? You might say nothing. And then if I connect them some wacky way and say, see, there's a horse. And you go, what? Um, that's kind of how a lot of these are. And then you get these fancy pictures around it. Well, that's what people are doing. But you're not going to step outside and see, oh, yeah, there's that horse. I can tell. You know, sometimes they project, you know, big pictures of horses or, or you can do a you know, winged horse and you can do a lion and you can do whatever cool thing you want. Canoes for Native Americans, they do a lot, you know, something like that. You've birds and hawks and it's an eagle and there's a swan and, but different people do different things. Okay, anyway, I've said that a million times. There's 88 patterns, but many of the patterns simply do not make sense. I mean, seriously, if I drew... If I saw a star here and a star and there were a bunch of stars and there's stars here and there's a whole bunch of stars and here's the region, okay, and I go around that region because there's a star here and a star here. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Ready? Okay, ready? There it is. Okay, and I chose to connect these dots. Oh, that's so close. I don't want to do that. Let's do this one. Well, here's the thing. This is a region, one of the 88. Why? Because we chose to, so we can all agree to talk about the same thing, right? Um, and there's my pattern. And that is the frog pattern. Why? Because look, it's a frog, and there's its tongue catching a fly. I just made that, I, right? Like, oh, that one you could almost go, oh, okay, I kind of see that. By the way, this is in that constellation of the frog constellation. This is, and that is too, everywhere. You keep looking, you're gonna see stuff like galaxies, etc. So the, the region is here. The pattern it's named after might or might not make sense. Honestly, some of them look like that or something. You go, what? And they'll say, look, it's a pig. And you go, you're a pig. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I, what are you talking about? So some of them are like that. And then they draw some fancy picture. I don't know. And then the uh, tail of a pig. Uh, I, I, and you go, whatever. You need to get some sleep. But that's the way it is. Okay, so if you say it's in Leo, it doesn't mean it's in the pattern of Leo. Now, Leo, by, by the way, actually does look like a lion. There's a couple of ways, maybe a few, to connect them. Um, I like my way, because it's what I can see near city lights, too. I should show that. No, I'm going to show it to you next time. In fact, I'm going to show you some pictures. OK, so the region is the boundary. The entire celestial sphere is handled with 88 regions. Anywhere you look is through a region. There is some pattern which may or may not be obvious, and if you don't have a dark sky, you might even not see it, and you're certainly not going to go out there and connect the same dots that a lot of these were. Additionally, the ones down here weren't known by Greeks, right? Greek, Egyptian, Middle East, all those folks working together closely and, and all that stuff, but they didn't know about those. So you go down here, you gotta make up new ones, or maybe maybe you respected the indigenous people, they might teach you a thing or two instead of wiping them out. But, um, so it can be really hard to find them. I mean, even with a map, and then you go outside and you go, what? But, number nine, Asterisms, the Greek word for star, aster. Stella, Latin, Greek, asterisms. And there are lots. And they are any easy to find or easy to see pattern that often is not a constellation pattern. Big Dipper, that's not a constellation pattern. The W of Cassiopeia, uh, maybe. It's kind of in Cassiopeia, yeah. We look for a W. Um, what else? The baseball diamond of Pegasus. Uh, 
the and some of them will connect the the winter triangle connects a little dog a big dog and orion's shoulder and connects dots from different ones so it's just easy to find stuff summer triangle connects three different three bright stars from three different constellation patterns and every pattern is inside a region that's it okay that's that's all there is to it so you break it up i i, I think this one is really cool i mentioned orion uh, I don't know, I'll just use, uh, I'll use red so you can see it. That Orion is basically uh, his, I should, I should be a little more careful on this. Uh, Orion's belt, his torso is in the northern celestial hemisphere. Where are you? See, it's not so easy. Where is he? See, it's tricky, right? It's confusing. You have to play with it a little bit. Sit there. Anyway, it's like basically there. He's got his shoulders, I don't know, something like that. Shoulders, beetle juice, right? Or bale juice uh, here, and then Rigel here. So it's like his, uh, his lower, his legs are below the celestial equator. His torso is above it. He's got a little log, and then, then the, he, and he does. I would call, I would call Orion both a constellation pattern and an asterism because you can find Orion the hunter. He's got shoulders and a belt, a waist, maybe knees or feet. I prefer feet, whatever. That kind of looks like an in the dark sky. You can see that. And you can even see maybe a shield. Um, so Orion is a pattern. It's a constellation pattern it's there's a region some wacky you know lines along declination or right ascension like whatever um, anything in that region not just in the pattern is in the Orion region but Orion pattern is also an asterism because it's pretty easy to spot and he's fighting the bull Taurus which you would look for a V so I don't know if you call that I mean, that is part of the pattern. You look for the V as horns go way up here, and then, you know, and Gemini, well, you look for the twin dots, or Gemini would be the correct pronunciation. And, and you can actually put together two stick figures on that one, but some of them don't look. The dog, his dog, I'll draw it over here, looks something like this. They're serious. Remember, negative 1.5. So you go like that, and you go, look, a dog, <laughs> right? A dog. But we still actually kind of call it, I don't know, I'd call it an asterism because I can find it, but maybe I look for that. This, these are really hard to see. They're not that bright. Um, so I do see the front leg, back, back leg, tail, but you might not make that, right? You could have called it anything. And then if you could see this in a dark sky, you can see that, ah, too bad. And then Procyon, Canis Minor, uh, his little dog is a hot dog or a, or a dachshund or a chihuahua, I don't know what it is, but really? That's a dog? And then there's some region around it, Canis Minor, Canis Major. So that's how it, it, it is, okay? Region, everything's in a region. You look through the window of that, those boundaries, boundaries given by declination research. There are 88 by choice. Um, there are some, there's some pattern that gives it its name. It may or may not make sense, but any pattern that does, kind of easy to find. Uh, mm, Cygnus the Swan, check this out. No, Cygnus the Swan, and it's also Cygni, uh, uh, Cygni uh, Swan in Latin, name for Swan, uh, looks like Star, star, star. And you go, uh, I could pretty much make anything out of it. They go, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's also a lot of times people will draw it like this. I really object to that. I don't like that because truthfully, even in these guys, there's a star there and there's a star there. Put that together and what do you get? 
come on. We've got the tail right here and the long neck of the swan. Cygnus the swan. I consider Cygnus the swan an asterism as well as the pattern of the constellation. The region goes, you know, whatever. I don't know. I, don't, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, you can look it up. So anything in there is in Cygnus the swan region. Anything along here is Cygnus the swan pattern, which is also an asterism. But some are wacky. Let me show you those. I'm sure if this is still playing. Yes, we're still in the game. Let me see why I, why I wanted to do one more. Let me show you some pictures. You can look at this on the internet. I do caution you because you might get confused by some stuff that you find. All right, it's all about angles, mapping it out, trying to figure it out. Because now you're at this place where you got, you got the puzzle, right? You're confused. What is going on? And you can see why we need... You know, and, and our ancestors realized it too. They realized they had to read chapter three and four. So, this one's a lot. Ugh. All right, sorry, square it up so it's not too wacky. Um, so we measure angles, you know, track on, track mean. Can you see that very well? Not very, kind of. So what, what do you see? You see, um, These lines are lines of declination. You don't have to, I won't ask you to identify that, I'm just saying it. These lines are lines of right ascension. And the red are the regions. A little hard to see, but you see that they go parallel to uh, lines of right ascension and declination. But you know, you don't see that in the sky. If, you're, if that's your gig, then you use that, you do that. But um, this might be a little better. And now, but it's pretty confusing, right? So uh, the regions are in green. Wow, look what I found. You see Orion, shoulders. There's a little dot for his head if, you, if it's dark enough. Um, the region is the puzzle piece boundary and different size, irregular shape. Um, where was it? Oh, there it is. The V of Taurus, right? So you start getting used to it a little bit, right? I see a, a king, which makes no sense whatsoever. I see a winged horse. Don't you see that? Come on, it's a winged horse. Here's the neck and the head. Gosh, so obvious. No, it's not. Um, and Andromeda is part of the winged horse. The daughter and the, the mom, Cassiopeia, is up there. And the dad, Cepheus, the king. And she's the queen of Ethiopia. Different Ethiopia. Anyway, how many are there? Yeah, uh, 88. Do you have to know them all? Absolutely not. So, now, the cool thing is that, and this is our ancestors a long time ago, they just kept, if you keep track, you'll notice it. You'd find in winter, I see these out at night. And you can connect them. This is poorly done because there's actually a knee. This guy's kind of bow-legged. And the arm should go across there. So, again, be careful what you see. And this is... You know, I drew it the way that I think makes sense for the big dog, big dog, uh, little dog. It really is just about like that. And Orion. So in winter, I expect to see this region. And by the way, this, this, this. Again, this is not very well drawn, but uh, no, no, no offense to whoever created it because I like it enough to use it. But is the winter triangle, and it's perfect equilateral. This side is actually equal to that, about two and a two fists and a thumb, 25 degrees from here to here, two fists and a thumb, two fists and a thumb. You can measure things out. Anyway, Andromeda, Cassiopeia, the Ethiopian queen, doesn't she look like a queen? Uh, I don't know, W for a woman, that's, hey, I just thought of, there's her king, he's, he's a bit of a house, um, so whatever. Lots of patterns. This is um, Ursa is for bear. If you know the Spanish word for bear you, or Italian, you get that. Major means big. So you can connect it this way. I don't think it's a very good way to connect it, frankly. And it's really hard to see it. But inside, so the region is somewhere around there. The pattern might be this. There's your bear. Like, good luck. That's really. But what we see is the Big Dipper. You see the Big Dipper. 
That is a what? It's not the region. It's not the whole pattern. It is a, an asterism. This is a big shepherd. Really? Yeah, if you, if you map it out really carefully, in a dark sky you can see a, a shepherd sitting down with a big head and smoking a pipe. Seriously. But what most people see, and there's not really a curve like this, it kind of goes straight, is a kite or an ice cream cone. So, you know, Leo, this is not so bad, frankly. This is kind of, I get rid of this stuff. I just go like this head, backward question mark. So you can look for the backward question mark. But Leo kind of looks like a lion to me. Here's his body lying down. There's actually a star here, leg, belly on the ground. And then sometimes I draw the tail here, but that makes more sense. Draw the tail like that, I like that. And the butt, right? So that's not bad. Uh, but some of them, okay, what's that? It's a crow. Of course it's a crow. How could you not? I mean, seriously? <laughs> what, are they, what are they thinking? Uh, oh, when was that? Spring. So spring, those are going to be out. And then uh, in summer, Sagittarius is out. And I'll show you that. Scorpius does look like a scorpion. Sagittarius does not look like its namesake. This, of course, is a what? You'd never guess, right? You would never guess what Ophiuchus is. There's a serpent tamer. We'll talk about it a little bit next time. Libra uh, kind of scales, like one side balancing the other side. The eagle. What's this? Okay, what's that? Uh, you cheat if you read the name. Uh, it's a dolphin. Here's the swan, but it should have wings that go out here because there are stars that connect that. So just getting you acquainted and that lets you know what to find where there's exploded stars the ring nebula look over here look at you know the crab nebula look at and in fall you can see these things so the green is the boundary of the puzzle piece or the region anything even if you don't see it is in the region so at a distance you might see galaxies or various things the pattern is sometimes quite wacky, but the asterism, like a teapot. Here's the handle, here's the lid, here's the spout, and the bottom of the teapot. That's an asterism. The full Sagittarius, I don't even know. <laughs> the region, anything inside, the pattern is supposed to be a big bear. Like uh, You can do a bear better with the nose out here and then the hind legs back here. That's a better bear. But we look for the Big Dipper, which is a big saucepan handle. And this is a pretty cool thing right here. It's actually two stars you can see with your naked eye. With a good telescope, you can see even more. Little Dipper, guess what that is? Ah, that's Polaris. These are pretty faint stars. So I think of it as a measuring cup going into there. Pretty faint stars. So you, you may not see that, but Polaris, just know it's at the end of the, of the measuring cup that pours into the saucepan. Those are my names. Big Dipper, Little dip, Dipper. Part of Ursa Major, Big Bear. Part of Ursa Minor or Ursa Minor. That's a little bear, really? That's a whatever. Uh, Cassiopeia, the Ethiopian queen, they kind of drew her. She was conceited and got in trouble and cast out to the sky. That's the short story, kind of. Um, so, what is, I mean, I don't even, want, I don't even know what that, I, I, I think, I have to look at that again. I think that's, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, that I think is, is serious, and I think that's the big dog. What? What is that? That's a line. What is, are they trying to mess with us? So don't worry about it. H.A. Ray uh, did the illustrations for Curious George. And he also did a couple of books for astronomy. He said, well, why don't we connect the dots to make sense? This is pretty good Gemini, Gemini. Scorpius looks like a scorpion. That kind of looks like scales. So he was trying to make them more noticeable, but truthfully, you need a dark sky and you got to work at it. it. They don't, a lot of it does not pop out because you can connect them any which way. Um, you don't go outside and see that. 
you see that, but you also don't see all those stars because that's anyway lots of stuff you can you can explore. But next we're going to talk about this line and where the wanderers go. That's a good title for it. Where the wanderers go, and that is going to complete our chapter two. So you're almost there. The ecliptic and the zodiac. Cheers.